So I decided to build my Blackstone into my outdoor kitchen island, except this grease trap back here is kind of a pain to remove and replace. So I needed to make a modification. And uh, this video is about what I did and how I did it. And hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. So to start off, I took my grease cup and I drilled this hole out of it with this inch and three eighths core bit. Um, that is just big enough to fit my inch and a quarter outside diameter drain through. It does have a flange on the top, so we're going to take care of that problem next. What we're going to do is we're going to put a two inch outside diameter pusher onto a two and a half inch inside diameter backer in the bench vise, get it tightened down. And now we're left with a dimple around the hole like this. So now that drain fits flush, if anything, a little bit lower in that grease cup, allowing the grease to drain completely downwards and not want to stay in the trap. So that was the first part. Now what we got to do is obviously assemble it. So that's it together with silicone and a rubber gasket. Heads up if you do this. The threads on these drains are incredibly sharp. I did cut myself. Uh, you don't have to cry for me or anything. Just send hopes and uh, hopes and prayers my way, will you? So now that we got this all assembled, we're going to test fit. As you can see, I took the uh, the actual flat top off of my griddle. This is just going to be a test fit so I can help index the drain so I know exactly where to drill my hole. There is a granite shelf that my Blackstone sits on, so I'm going to have to drill through that. The stainless backer, the hardy backer, and I just end up getting right on the edge of one of the 2x4 supports. So as you can see right here, this is just how I'm making sure that the grease is going to go into the rear grease drain on the Blackstone and down as closely to the middle of that drain hole as possible. And as you can see from the side, I'll kind of give you a little bit better visual right here. That is right about in the middle of that drain hole. So I think we're going to call that good. Yeah, that did take me a little while to measure off the centers to make sure that was right, but we got it. So using a two inch core bit, because the drain is actually inch and a half outside diameter, um, excuse me, inch and a quarter outside diameter. So I did want a little bit of relief around it. So I just marked that out, got a two inch core bit on it. Going to throw it on my old Metabo here. These things are worth their weight in gold. They just last forever. If you don't have an angle grinder, what are you doing? Man, you got to get one. We're going to crank this puppy all the way up. We're going to get to drilling. So obviously, here we go. It does make a little bit of dust. Get yourself some water. Squirt it. Not that you have this step, but if you do, make sure you're not breathing in all that silica. It's really bad for you. And as you can tell, shameless plug, I do work for a granite countertop company. Uh, which is how I was able to get a hold of my outdoor kitchen island countertop and this lower shelf. Just one of the perks of the job. Figured I would uh, drill it out, make this modification. I kind of have the tools to do that, luckily. If you don't, maybe hire your local granite company to come out and drill for you if this is something you're up against. So there's that core bit with the core in it. We'll get rid of that. Now what we're going to do is drill through the backer. It's going to be a stainless backer that I put in there first to help with heat dissipation when I was building this unit. There's also a welding blanket that's in under there, which is not a huge deal to drill through, obviously. It's just wool with copper mesh fiber woven into it um, for heat dissipation again. And then the last layer is going to be Duroc. Um, again, for heat dissipation and to keep the heat away from the 2x4 construction of my of my island. So this did take a little while to drill through. As you can see, I'm kind of taking my time with it, pushing like hell, really smoking that drill. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of beat my stuff anyway, so I didn't feel too bad for it. Plus, it's a Milwaukee. It can handle it. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean to show you that. That's okay. So now we got our hole. There she is. She goes all the way through. Give it a tickle. Let's see. We have a inch and a quarter ID 
inch and five eighths OD silicone hose. If you do this modification, you must use silicone. It's going to have the highest heat uh, the heat rating on it. So it is a really tight fit. As you can see, I kind of struggle with it here for a minute. And finally, I kind of start using my brain and I turn it upside down and, and use gravity to, to help my weight push it onto there. Boom. Got it. Nice and snug up on there. That thing's not going anywhere. I'm not even going to bother clamping it. There's no pressure in this line anyway, so it's not going to fall out. And here I am acting like an absolute child, finding the hole. Yeah, I know. Don't judge me. All right, back to business. Now we got that all fit up. We're going to assemble everything back again. And I'm going to show you what it looks like underneath. So there it is. Hope it helps you. Like, comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.